Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to show you how well our Warpaints Air Range and Warpaints Fanatic Range work together. You may also see some speed paints, metallics, and effects put to use in this tutorial. Thomas is painting up a Ballistis Dreadnought from Games Workshop's Warhammer 40,000 range. Follow along with the Dark Angels theme. He will paint it in the style of Deathwing. Larger units or centerpiece units often call for more advanced techniques, and we'll showcase a few of those in this video. It's a long one, so grab a coffee, tea, or cold beverage, sit back, and enjoy. Thomas will begin with an application of Warpaint's Air Magnolia Brown sprayed into the shadowed areas over top of the model, which was previously primed in a Zenithal fashion using our air primers. With charred bone from the air range, he will begin blocking in the base and mid-tones across the panels of the Dreadnought's armor. Next, he will apply bleached bone as his airbrush highlight, leaving some of the charred bone and magnolia brown still showing. We'll begin blocking in all of the metallics with rough iron from the Fanatic range and his trusty Wargamer Regiment brush. Take your time here, it will be tedious, but the neater you can apply this for your metal base coats, the easier it will be for you later on. Some of the steps that we're gonna to showcase to you now in the beginning of this tutorial will be repeated later on in different parts of the model, so be sure to pay attention now as we will breeze through those elements later on. We'll begin pulling our first highlights with Warpaint's Fanatic Pale Sand and a Wargamer Detail Brush. The high-end Rotmarter Sable on these brushes has the perfect structure and bounce for painting all of these fine details. You can thin these Fanatic paints to the extreme for ultimate control, which is super beneficial for highlighting as well as other advanced techniques like Thomas is showing off here. With thin down pale sand, you can pull scratches and make imperfections on the armor for a beautifully worn look. By applying this style of weathering over your decals or free hands, it's a cool way to unify the model. You'll then use matte white to pick out the hardest edges and raise points on the model. Next, we'll move on to using red copper. This is a new color from the Fanatic Metallics, and we'll add this as our first highlight to our rough iron base coat. A simple edge highlight will suffice. Then we'll follow that up with a refined edge highlight of shining silver on the brightest edges. It's time to pick out some of the other details on the miniature. Carnelian skin is applied liberally over this piping and other bits on the model, while other details are based in cobalt metal, a bluish silver metallic. We'll add a quick and easy highlight of Tiger's Eye Skin to that piping, and then we'll apply a wash of dark tone to the shadows and details of all of the metal bits. While that's drying, grab your detail brush and apply some scratching to the metal areas. To paint the missiles, use Warpaint's Fanatic River and Fury as your base coat. Pure Red is a nice vivid red as described by the Inter-Society Color Council, which was the guide for our practical naming convention, by the way. He'll just add this sparingly, leaving the previous color showing in the shadow. We're going to show you a couple different ways to paint lenses on this model. We'll use Scarab Green here over top of this lens. Follow that up with Pharaoh Guard applied in a crescent fashion in one corner. Next, we'll refine this highlight with Aqua Alchemy then push it even further with Amulet Aqua. Then you'll want to add a small dot or two of matte white to promote a glare effect on these lenses, and finish it off with a gloss varnish. We're going to play around with a lot of different styles of weathering in this tutorial. Thomas is going to add some verdigris, but he's going to start here with a deep bluish tone that would play nicely with the deeper copper shade metallics on the mini. So he's elected to begin with deep azure here. He's really thinned this paint to the extreme using our pigmentless stabilizer medium. We'll follow that up with a more focused application of verdigris from the effects collection, and we'll apply this almost as a recess wash to areas of interest across the model. Now it's time to add some depth. We will use some strong tone wash to shade some of the details like the rivets on the bone colored armor. Remember all that scratching from before? Let's reinforce that a bit with some foam and brigandine brown. Grab some old packing foam or some sponge, lightly dab it in this blackish brown color and carefully apply this on the hard edges to create a realistic but simple chipped armor effect. Use some of that strong tone wash to create streaks of grime and more intentional weathering with your Wargamer detail brush. Work in thin, repeated layers to really hone in on the effect. You can also use dark rust from the effects range, thin it down and the slight texture within that paint will make the effect even more compelling. Then follow it up with a very thin application of the more orange shade Fresh Rust. 
To make this dreadnought even more visually interesting, Thomas painted the opposing shoulder armor in the more common, very dark green style of the Dark Angels. Many of the steps from before are already covered, so we'll briefly showcase the process here with different colors. Starting with a base coat of War Paint's Air Angel Green, then a carefully airbrushed highlight on the edges with Hazardous Smog, followed by a thin layer of Angel Green once again over top. We'll move on to a highlight and texture details with Guardian Green, then Green Skin. We'll use Eternal Hunt next, and finish it off with a focused highlight of Emerald Forest, all from the Warpaint's Fanatic range. We'll follow the same process as before for all of the metal parts on the LAS Cannon arm and the gun with the colors listed here. And we'll paint the tip of the LAS Cannon similarly to how we painted the missiles. Thomas has opted red for these colors as that is what is most accurately represented in the artwork for this faction from the game. But apply a simple base coat of Wyvern Fury, which you can also use as the base coat for your purity seals. Then begin pulling a simple highlight of pure red, and you can feather that into the base coat for a nice gradient blend. Follow it up with a refined highlight of angelic red and repeat this on the purity seals. Thomas has grabbed the airbrush once again, and he'll apply some weathering to the last cannon with grim black speed paint. If you don't have an airbrush, you can achieve this with the same paint, but apply it as a glaze, or you can use a dry brush of Warpaint's Fanatic Matte Black instead. Moving on to the parchment, apply a solid base coat of Dusty Skull from the Warpaint's Fanatic Light Neutrals Triad. Then you can begin base coating any icons on the model with Evil Chrome. We'll go back to the parchment with a wash of Soft Tone, and once that's dry, apply your first highlights with Skeleton Bone. We'll finish that up with a refined highlight of Pale Sand. You can see how these flexible triads allow you to play with tone and color, making highlighting simple and honestly brainless. Make those gold details pop a bit more with Greedy Gold from the Fanatic range, applied as the first highlight. And then you'll want to finish that off with one highlight of True Brass. We'll see this in a little bit more detail later on. For the optics on this side of the miniature, we'll go for a slightly brighter effect, this time putting Warpaint's Fanatic Data System Glow, a new effects paint to use over a white base coat. This fluorescent effects paint adds a punchy glowing effect with ease. We're jumping around a little bit here as Thomas painted the arms before painting the remaining chassis of this oversized war sarcophagus. Thomas is going to begin blocking out any of the non bone colored details with speed paint base coat of grim black to the gun casing and undercarriage as well as other surrounding details that will later be painted in different colors and methods. Once dry, he'll apply a base coat of rough iron We'll breeze through this as we already covered these techniques previously in this tutorial. Thomas will apply a pale sand highlight to all of the bone colored details on the chassis here. He'll apply a similar weathering and scratchy texture all across the hard edges and select panels of this portion of the miniature. Then he's gonna apply a focused recess wash of strong tone to the details of the bone armor. You'll wanna be as neat as you can here and use a detail brush for added control. We'll follow the same copper method as before, starting with rough iron, add a highlight of red copper, and finish it off with shining silver. You can see how effective the warm to cold metals play together in this clever combo of colors. We'll pick out all of the gold icons in the same fashion as before with a simple base coat of evil chrome. While that's drying, Thomas decided to paint some of the cords and piping with deep ocean blue. Apply a simple shade of strong skin tone followed by greedy gold, and finally, True Brass to quickly finish off your gold icons. Go ahead and chip that armor following the technique showcased before on the shoulder. And we'll weather the armor with the following colors, just as before. Then move on to highlighting the piping with Thunderous Blue over the Deep Ocean Blue. And follow it up with a refined highlight of Wolf Grey. You can even thin down your Dark Rust to apply a gritty wash to the piping too. Moving on, apply cobalt metal to the gun mounted on the chest and to everything that you want to have a true gray metal appearance on the model. You'll want to follow that with a liberal wash of dark blue tone, careful not to get this on other parts that you've previously painted on the miniature. 
use shining silver to highlight all of the metallics and you can be a little bit looser with these highlights as they are not focal points on the miniature if you'd like to save a little bit of time. Once complete, grab some oil stains from the Fanatic effects range and apply this to the inner joints of the miniature. This greasy glossy paint gives the effect of worn and heavily used machinery over metallic paint. You can then use some thinned down dark rust once again to add some texture to those joints. We'll finish off those tiny little legs of this big bad spirit powered robot. Thomas is going to paint one knee pad in angel green from the Fanatic range, which is a match to the air paint of the same name. We'll apply a highlight of guardian green and then a textured highlight of eternal hunt. This next step is completely optional, but it's a great time to show off how nicely these Fanatic paints cover when thinned down for freehand work. Choose the shape you wish, and yes, I'm bummed Thomas didn't choose a heart to, and just simply begin tracing in your base design. Use thin paints here for ultimate control. And if you need to, just go back and reapply a second coat neatly for maximum opacity. We're then gonna add some scratches and chipping with Angel Green, followed up by Eternal Hunt, and then Emerald Forest. Finish off the rest of the armor in the same method as before, and then you're ready to base your miniature in your chosen theme. We're gonna use the office's new favorite method, and if you wanna see how it's done, go check out our tutorial for Lionel Johnson, which is linked right here in the video. No matter what basing style you choose, if you follow along to this tutorial, you're sure to have a masterful looking centerpiece for your Dark Angels army. Many of these effects are easy to replicate in other colors just by choosing a different flexible triad and substituting the color sequences from that family. Thanks for tuning in. Now that you've seen how awesome Warpaint's Air and Warpaint's Fanatic work together, you probably want to know where you can get your hands on them. Find them at your friendly local game store, preferred online retailer, or at www.thearmypainter.com.